athletes, all of you have tight hip flexors. This is just a fact from cycling, right? When you're cycling, you're sitting in this posture and it makes your hip flexors super tight. Also, if you sit at work all day, this can be a problem because you shorten the hip flexors. So this is one of the most important stretches for every swimmer and runner specifically um, and triathlete because you need to have an open hip angle, but because your hips are so tight, you can't access the right muscles when you're swimming and running. So this is called the couch stretch, but this is my version of it. And you just wanna start in a cat and camel position. So your hands are underneath your shoulders with a nice flat back. You can round and arch your back a few times to help yourself prepare and use your breath. So you can inhale on the rounding, exhale on the arching or reverse it. It doesn't really matter. We're just priming the body and the hip flexor to stretch. So I'm going to take my left foot between my hands and I'm walking it forward because I really wanna make sure that I have a straight line from my knee, my hip, my shoulder to my ear, okay? A lot of times people will get into this position and this is what they look like. We're not stretching your hip when you do that. You need to make sure you lunge forward enough so the front shin is 90 degrees. You're framing that front foot with your palms flat on the ground. Now, if you can't reach yet, that's okay. You can work your way down here or you can use a yoga block, right? You can use two yoga blocks to help you. But the goal is to get your hip as far forward as possible into this stretched position, opening up the hip flexor. Now, some people's hamstrings on the other side, the left side, are too tight. So again, you're just gonna practice getting as close as you can to this straight position. And I wanna hold this position for at least a minute, okay? I'm gonna lean right and lean left and squeeze and release my right glute, right? As I'm pushing my hip forward. So I'm really loosening up this hip flexor and giving it some stretch. I can also push my foot, my back foot, I'm pushing down into the mat to help my quad fire. And when my quad contracts, it actually stretches my hip flexor, okay? So I'm squeezing and releasing my glute. I'm pushing my foot down into the floor and I'm leaning right and left as I'm breathing. So after about a minute, if you're flexible enough, you can, like I do, reach back for your ankle. Now, not everybody can do this. So I'm well aware of that and I'm actually pretty tight right now. So I'm still getting a really great stretch. I'm putting my foot, pushing my foot into my hand to create some resistance. And I'm really feeling the deep stretch in my hip flexor. So I'm gonna come up to balance on my opposite knee and I'm keeping the contraction, pushing my foot away as I'm at the same time pushing my hip forward. And the goal is to get them to touch, but it might not happen, right? The first time. But as you keep stretching and practicing, you can get closer and closer and closer. The main goal is to make sure that the hip angle, your butt is not back, right? You're not on your kneecap and you're sitting on your muscle, on your quad, not on your kneecap. And I hold this position for about a minute. So it's a two minute stretch total, but it's a game changer as far as you're improving your flexibility. So say you can't reach back for your own ankle, you're gonna use the couch or a fib ball or even the wall. You just wanna make sure that your knee is as close to the surface that you're leaning, you know, resting your shin on as possible. You don't want it really far away. So you wanna try to be as close as possible. And again, we're gonna get into that staggered position and I can already feel the stretch in my hip flexor. So I'm pushing my foot into the ball or the wall or the couch, squeezing and releasing the glute, right? And I'm gonna work my way up to get my glute closer to my heel, but still having the contraction and opening the hip flexor up. You can also add a side bend and opening up of your shoulder to get into this psoas. Feels so good. Keep your nice deep breathing in, in, in your nose and out your nose if possible. And it just feels amazing. And it's essential if you want to improve your swimming and your running. How does this improve your swimming? This improves your swimming because it allows you to train or kick from your hips as opposed to doing this when you kick. A lot of swimmers, new swimmers that are good cyclists, they don't use their hips. So doing this stretch can improve your kick in the pool. 
And then doing this stretch can also help your running because you want to have at least 30 degrees of extension as you foot strike and then pull your heel behind you you need your knee to come back about 30 degrees. And if you're too tight in your hip flexors, it's not gonna happen. I hope you enjoy this stretch. I recommend doing it at least once a day. Um, and I say that because that means you might get to it three times a week. <laughs> but off the bike, after a bike workout, it's really, really important so you don't stay tight so that you can do well in your swimming and your running. Wishing you well.